By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another Timmy's Top 10. In today's Timmy's Top 10, we are looking at Top 10 one one creatures in old school Magic the Gathering. And we are going to start by looking at the honorable mentions and I'm just going to quickly go through them from left to right and on, la on the first card here on the left is the Asp from the Arabian Nights expansion. One green, one one. If Asp inflicts, inflicts any damage on your opponent, your opponent must spend one before the draw phase of his or her next turn or lose an additional one life. Now, if you can get the Asp out early, if you're playing an aggressive tactic, this card can be extremely useful and a big pain for your opponent. It can, you'll be surprised how often you can actually deal two damage with the Asp if you can get it out early. Another card here on the list right next to the Asp from the same expansion, Arabian Nights, is the Aladdin. Now, Aladdin to cast is two red and two, of course, for a one-one creature. To, and then let's take a look at what it can do. For two red and one, you need to tap it, and then you can take control of an artifact from your opponent. Artifact is returned when Aladdin is removed from play or when the game ends. Interesting here is, so you can tap it, steal an artifact. Next turn, untap it. You keep the artifact and steal another artifact. So, I mean, th this card should be bonkers in a format like Old School Magic because everybody is playing with artifacts. I, in all honesty, I think this card is a little bit underplayed. And how cool would it be to play this in an Atok brew? So, I don't know if there are any Atok deck players listening. Try out Aladdin. I mean, how it really, really cool. Okay, continue. Card right next to Aladdin, we find Witch Hunter. Witch Hunter is two white and two from the Dark Expansion. And um, this card is so interesting because it's a white card, but it feels so blue. Look at what it does. Tap, Witch Hunter does one damage to target player. Pay two white and one in tap. Return target creature opponent controls from play to owner's hand. Enchantments on the creature are destroyed. Now this card just reminds me of the perfect weapon against those annoying paralysis, but also a great weapon, even better against control magic. Playing against a blue mage, board in your witch hunter, and those control magics are a thing of the past. Okay, then the other card, again a card from the Arabian Nights, it's well represented in this honorable mentions list. For one black and two, we find Gabal Ghul. Gabal Ghul is such an interesting card. One, one, it's one of those cards that you want to brew with. It reads, at the end of each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Gabal Ghul for each other creature that died during the turn and was not regenerated. So basically what you can do here is play a sweeper like a Wrath of God or a Pestilence. And after that, all the creatures have died, then you put Gabal Ghul on the battlefield and at the end of your turn it gets plus one plus one counters for every um for every creature that died so this is really a card that you can brew around and let's take a look at the bottom row on the left side we find king Suleiman, and uh, this is really a sideboard card it's really a sideboard card one white and one it's a one one creature of course like all the creatures on this list again from the arabian nights it reads tap to destroy an afrit or a jinn now, some of the powerful, most powerful creatures and most used creatures in old school magics, magic or Afrits and Jinns. Surrendip Afrit. Uh, Juzum Jinn. What about Juzum Jinn? Urnum Jinn. I mean, you see them so often. And King Suleiman can do that job for you. So, again, one of those cards that maybe should be used more in the sideboard. Obviously, a thing that all the Arabian Night cards are dealing with, a problem that they have to deal with is City in a Bottle. And City in a Bottle really has an impact, I feel, on how often these cards are played. Maybe too big of an impact. Right next to the Suleiman, uh, we find Citadel Druid. Hey, a card from another expansion here. One green and one is from the Antiquities, and it reads, Druid gains a plus one, plus one counter each time your opponent casts an artifact. So this can be extremely powerful, or can get extremely big, I should say, very quickly, especially when playing against an artifact deck. The obvious drawbacks here is that a Mox is only zero to cast, and usually, especially when you're on the draw, by the time you get your Citadel Druid out, a lot of those Mox and, and Mana Rocks are already in the game. But despite this, uh, that fact, this card could be an interesting side, uh, addition to your green sideboard. Then right next to it, we find a card from The Dark, and this is Elves of Deep Shadow for one green. It's a 1-1. One, one. You can tap it to add black to your mana pool, and Elves of Deep Shadow deals one damage to you. I mean, I think a big reason why this card is on my, my honorable mention list is because of the art. I think this is one of the most beautiful pieces of artwork that Jesper Mirforce gave the game Magic the Gathering. Um, I have a playset of these. Um, I always want to play with these. 
in all honesty, usually I have to pick a Birds of Paradise over this because it can make any color mana, or I have to pick a Llanowar Elf simply because it doesn't damage me. A problem is in old school magic, and I mean, let me know if you agree with this or not, but the thing is, we're using City of Brass very often in all sorts of decks. I mean, I, I love that card, but it deals one damage to you. If you then, on addition, also have an Elves of Deep Shadow dealing one damage to you, you're already looking at two damage a turn just to get your mana going. And I was recently playing with this deck against an Underworld Dreams deck, and oh man, it, I mean, it really killed me. But nonetheless, it's on this list. I, I, I think it's a really good 1-1. One, one. The card right next to it, I mean, that is such an interesting card. Hell's Caretaker, one black and three. Summon Hell's Caretaker, how cool is that? From Legends, it reads tap, and during your upkeep, sacrifice a creature and take a creature from your graveyard and put it directly into play. Treat this creature as though it were just summoned. So when I read cards like this, I am thinking about reanimator decks. I'm thinking about all sorts of weird structures where you put Lord of the Pits in your graveyard and you make crazy trades. And I mean, this is really a card that makes me want to brew. It's really, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful card. Let me know, by the way, if you have a Hell's ca uh, Caretaker deck, because um, I have a few Hell's Caretakers and I would love to brew one. So these are my honorable mentions. And now let's continue to the top 10. And on number 10, we are finding a classical creature, Kurt Ape. For one red, it's a 1-1. One, one, and of course, a Taiga right next to the Kurt Ape, because Kurt Ape wants to be in a jungle. And this is just a beautiful card. One red, it can make itself 2-3 if there is a forest. The combination, the ancient combination, of course, is Taiga into Kurt Ape. And I think this creature lost a lot of its uh, play and game in Old School Magic the Gathering because of two factors. First of all, the Mishra's Factory. It can pump itself into a 3-3 and kill the Kurt Ape. So that makes Kurt Ape much less e uh, effective. Another reason is that, hey, it is an Arabian Nights card. And we talked about that before. Arabian Nights is under a lot of pressure because of the city in a bottle. So still, it, it made it to the top 10 at number 10. So let's go to number 9. On number nine, we are finding Simbad, and Simbad is one blue and one a summon Simbad creature. Tap to draw a card for your library, but discard that card if it is not a land. Now you can do so many cool things with this card, but just the fact that you can draw a card, I mean, something is happening. You can look at it from both ways. If it's not a land card, at least you're putting something in your graveyard, and maybe that is useful if you're playing with, for example, Animate Dead or any other uh, card that lets you pull take cards out of your graveyard and hey if it's a land card then hey you, you just got an extra card for free obviously this card is even better when you combine it with other cards for example sylvan library it lets you look at the top three cards of your deck you know you, then you know exactly where you can find the lands and when to activate simbat and whether or not it is useful and why to activate simbat you can even use simbat to go through your useless cards quicker where you say okay all of these three cards are not great I'm just gonna pick one and I know the two on the top I don't really need at this point. Then you can use Simbad to kind of filter for your deck and dump them in your graveyard so that that key card that you need will come to the surface sooner than later. So that is Simbad on number nine. Then we're going to number eight. On number eight, we are finding a personal favorite of mine, Argivian Archaeologists, Archaeologist also, uh, nicknamed the shirt because it's kind of like he's not wearing pants. I mean, he's wearing this cocky type of pants, but I mean, it looks like he's shirtless, right? So for two white and one, uh, this creature from the antiquities does something very special because you can pay two white and tap to bring any artifact from your graveyard to your hand. And obviously a dream combo is Arche Argivian Archaeologist with Chaos Orb. Keep flipping, keep flipping. So we find the archaeologist here on number eight. Let's go to number seven. And on number seven, we're finding a Whirling Dervish. Now this card has proven itself to be a golden sideboard card for a lot of decks. Two green and you've got a 1-1 one, one creature, a summon dervish with protection from black. And that protection from black is obviously very important and one of the reasons that it can be such a good sideboard card. If you're a green mage and you're facing one of those aggressive black decks, the whirling dervish can really, really save you. And the good thing is it gains plus one, plus one 
uh, at the end of each turn in which it does damage to an opponent. Now important here to note is that once you put your counter on your Whirling Dervish, officially you are saying to your opponent, I'm passing turn. So I mean, usually in old school magic we're quite relaxed and I've never seen anybody saying, hey man, you said you passed a turn. But technically, when you've put your counter on there, it's the end of the turn. Now, I've put a Pestilence next to this creature because obviously Whirling Dervish has protection from black. So it's a pretty nice combo if you can get these two cards on the table. Kill everything in the field except for Whirling Dervish because it has protection from black. Then attack your opponent to get that plus one, plus one counter. Okay, let's continue with this list on number six. And on number six, we are finding Royal Assassin. Now, this is, of course, a classic combination. Royal Assassin, two black and one, a summon assassin. Tap to destroy any tapped creature. So this uh, beautiful 1-1, one, one, of course, works fantastic with an IC manipulator. Tap the creatures down of your opponent and kill them with the Royal. And um, the nice thing is, if you don't have an IC to combine it with, even just having your Royal Assassin on the board it works like a wall. It kind of numbs your opponent until they have something to deal with the Royal Assassin. So it's like everybody is taking a step back once you've, you've, you've played your Royal Assassin, you know, once it's on the board. And now we are ready to start with the top five on this list and on number five. We are finding Preacher from the expansion The Dark. For two white and one, Preacher is a 1-1 one, one summon Preacher. And I just would like to point out the art on this card. It's just incredibly stunning. I would play this, this card just for the art alone. But let's now take a look at what the card actually does. Tap and you gain control of one of opponent's creatures. Opponent chooses which target creature you gain control of. If Preacher becomes untapped, you lose control of this creature. You may choose not to untap Preacher as normal during your untap phase. You also lose control of the creature if Preacher leaves play or at the end of game. Now again, Preacher really one of those white cards, just like Witch Hunter, by the way, that reminds me of a Blue Mage. How cool would it be to have this weird kind of deck where you combine four Witch Hunters and four Preachers? I'm just kind of thinking now because your opponent gets to choose what they want to give you but maybe if you send everything back that you don't want with your witch hunter and then you tap your preacher that would be pretty cool anyway um the card that i've chosen to combine it with for this list is diamond valley i've seen players doing this and it's really cool they use preacher at the end um at their end step or what whenever actually during the turn of the opponent to steal one of the creatures and then sack it with diamond valley and then they they and they destroy your creature and they gain life from your creature. And you know what, what the worst thing of this whole combo is? They can do it again next turn. They can do it again. So it's really, it's, it's, it's actually tons of fun if you're the one playing it. Unfortunately, I don't own a Diamond Valley. One of those cards that's still on the list, but if you own one and if you have a Preacher, this is definitely a really fun and recommended combo for you to play with. So um, this is it on number five Preacher. Let's go to number four. And on number four, we are finding Flying Man. And Flying Man is one blue. It's just a one, one flyer for one. And I could have put um, the script sprites here as well, or just any, a one, one creature, a flying one, one creature for one is just very powerful in old school magic. The reason I've chosen Flying Man is because it just works so well in an aggro uh, blue brew. And I've seen it um, being played quite successfully in many, uh, in many decks. Unstable Mutation is a nice card to combine with it, but it's also a dangerous card. The obvious idea here is to make give yourself a 4-4 flyer turn 2 that can attack and deal 4 damage to your opponent. Now it's also dangerous for obvious reasons. First of all, both of these cards are Arabian Nights, so again, here is that card again, City in a Bottle. It's dangerous when you're playing with these cards, when, it, when you're so uh, Arabian Nights committed. And it's also dangerous because when you're playing your Unstable Mutation, your opponent can respond by, for example, casting a Lightning Bolt on your Flying Man. That means you're losing both creatures. Another way how this could kind of backfire on you is, of course, if they simply remove Flying Man as soon as the Unstable Mutation is on there. So in a way, you're setting yourself up for two for one. What I personally like to do as well is actually not playing Unstable on it, but just keep poking my opponent, being that annoying player, like, okay, attack you for one with Flying Man, attack you for one with Flying Man. And you can see your opponent is thinking, oh, I should have I should have killed this creature the moment it hit the board, but I didn't, and now I feel like 
I don't want to do it anymore because I've taken damage. So you're giving your opponent a difficult choice. And I think that's something that Flying Man is really good at giving your opponent a difficult cho choice of should I invest removal into a 1-1 flyer? I really do not want to. But then again, it's dealing so much or so much, but it's dealing damage every single turn. Okay, so that's it for the first uh, six cards on this list. We are now going to start with the top three and on number three, we are finding a classic. We are finding the mighty, the green Lanawer Elves. So of course, this is really a staple in old school Magic the Gathering, the Lanawer Elves. One green, one one, tap to add one green mana to your mana pool. This tap can be played as an interrupt. Beautiful card, has been popular from the get-go. It's just ramp, ramp in its purest form. Of course, you have Birds of Paradise, to consider as well whenever you have to choose between a Lana or Elves or a Birds of Paradise. Interesting to note here, because it's a 1-1, you can also use your Pendle Haven on Lana or Elves to put some extra pressure on the board. Obviously, Birds of Paradise can create any type of mana, so it really depends strongly on what kind of deck you played. I'm showing it here now with Armageddon, because in Urnimgeddon, the Lana or Elves can play a very decisive role. It can get Armageddon out one turn early. And you know what? When Armageddon destroys all the lands, your Lanawer Elf stays on the battlefield. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So it can really give you that advantage. So this is on number three. Let's go to number two. And on number two, we are finding Prodigal Sorcerer. Yes, yes, the Timmy baby. Maybe you expected this creature to be on number one on my list. And believe me, I really wanted to. And you know what? Maybe number two is a little bit high, but hey, it's my list. I'm gonna put it on two, yeah. So what it does, well, we all know what it does, but I'm gonna read it to you anyway. For one blue and two, it's a summon wizard. You can tap it to do one damage to any target, so to a creature or to a player. So it's better than a witch, because it can go do one damage to any target. And the card that I've combined it with here in this example is Living Plane. Living Plane, beautiful art, beautiful art. Really, I, I love it. Um, what this card does, it's an enchant world. Treat all land in play as both lands and one one creatures. Now, obviously, the combo is pretty obvious here. You can use your Protocol Sorcerer to start destroying the lands of your opponent. I mean, that's just incredibly cool. Another way, what I really like as well as Protocol Sorcerer and Desert, Protocol Sorcerer and Insult Energy, Protocol Sorcerer and Fungusaur. There are actually a lot of different little kind of synergies and combos you can make with the Timmy. And maybe that is why I've put it here on number two, because it's a very versatile card, at least in my book it is. Now let's go to number one. On number one, are you ready? Because I think you are going to be surprised to see this on number one. We find Triskelion on number one, an artifact creature from the antiquities with a casting cost of six. What? Six mana for a one-one creature? How could that ever be good? Well, let me tell you, when Triskelion comes into play, it gets three plus one plus one counters when cast. Controller may discard a, car, uh, may discard a plus one plus one counter at any time to do one damage to any target. Now, I've played with Triskelion plenty of times to know that this card is just bonkers in old school magic. Why? Because it usually represents a two for one. There are always some small creatures that you can just instantly wipe out when you play this card. If your opponent wants to destroy this card, it's even a hassle because it still deals three damage to the opponent. Hey, you play this enchant on it? Fine. I'm just going to take three counters off and kill some of your stuff and deal some damage to you. And oh yeah, I also re uh, lose a creature in the process. You know, and another great thing, what you see a lot of mages do uh, in a deck called Robots, is when people play a Swords to Plowseers on Triskelion, it gets removed from the game. But you know what? Triskelion has a unique ability that it can kill itself. So it kills itself, ends up in the graveyard. And when it's in the graveyard, you can use, hey, Archaeologist, you can use Animate Deck, even better. This card also is perfect with cards like Copy Artifact. But it's really a lot of fun when you have Atonis' Coffin out. Because what you can do is you can tap the coffin, put your skeleton in, then during your upkeep, um, during your untap step, choose to untap the coffin, and then you're releasing the Triskelion, and the Triskelion comes out with additional plus one, plus one counters, because it keeps the counters that it had when you put it in the coffin, and then the counters are doubled when it comes out of the coffin. Now, important to note here is that your Triskelion does come into play tapped, but also an important thing to note here is that that doesn't matter for uh, removing the plus one plus one counters. You can still do that. It doesn't matter whether the Triskelion is tapped or untapped. So to make a long story short, you can 
put your Triskelion in the coffin, and then the next turn when you untap your coffin, it comes into play with six counters. Yeah, if it if it came in if it went into the coffin with three counters, because every time it comes into into the game, it gets three new plus one plus one counters. So in theory, you could actually get twenty one counters on Triskelion. I mean that that would take you six turns, since when you play it, it already has three counters on it. But you know it would be pretty cool. Then you've got twenty one ping damage on your Triskelion, and you can just kill your opponent in one go with this huge Triskelion robot and all these arms shooting at your opposing mage. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That would that would be really nice. I like that idea. Okay, this was my uh, Timmy's top 10. If you like these top 10s, leave a comment. Let me know what kind of top 10 uh, list you would like to see next. I mean, it's been a while since I've had a chance to actually make a new top 10 list for you. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by watching the movie. Hey, you've already done that. Thank you very much. You can leave a comment, leave a like, click that notification bell. It helps a lot. And uh, of course, share this content on your socials. Thank you for the people that are already doing that. And you can now also support the channel financially via Patreon. Yes, Timmy Talks has a Patreon account. So if you want to support me and if you want to support the show, it kind of sounds like a rap here, um, you can go to the Patreon page. There's probably a little info card appearing right now. You can click on there and you can check it out. For now, we are going to look at the end scroll at all the patrons that are supporting Timmy Talks. Ik het is, ik het is, zomba kazee.